Hello, my name is Matt Seuss. I'm a fine art landscape and nature photographer and Olympus educator up here in Bozeman, Montana. And today we're going to be taking a look at Skyloom's Luminar AI update number three that just came out. And we're going to be taking a close look in particular about the changes that they've made to sky replacement, the actually enhancements that they've made to it since update number two. Now, just to backtrack a little bit here for a second, update number two came out about 10 weeks ago, and I was pretty much the only YouTuber out there that was actually very critical of it. Update number two allowed us to have the ability to have our clouds reflected in the water. Prior to that, you couldn't do that in Luminar AI and Sky Replacement. So really cool being able to have sky reflections in your water. But again, I found a lot of issues with it. It wasn't working correctly. This placement was all over the place. It wasn't very accurate at all. And I let you guys know about that because I, I got to speak the truth. I got to let you guys know about this stuff. Uh, I want this stuff to work too. I want this software to really work. And I was finding that it wasn't. Well, in those last 10 weeks, I've had a couple discussions with Skyloom directly, and uh, they've really taken to heart what I had to bring to the table in terms of feedback. And they've made a bunch of changes now in update number three. So we're going to take a look at that and see if Sky, if it has been improved, if the ref water reflections have been improved. And I'm also going to have to let you know of another issue that I've found that has come up now with update number three. All right, let's go ahead and get started right away. I'm going to switch my screen over here. And on the left here, I have update number two running. And on the right hand side, this is update number three. So I have them running side by side. They're in different catalogs. Now, right now, all I did there is this is actually one of Luminar's provided photos that they provide the media and, and everyone to uh, you know mess around with the uh, with the photos inside of Luminar AI. So I chose one of their photos this time because it has a really nice even horizon right in the middle, nice blue blue sky above and a nice reflection in that. We could just see the before and after. Now I haven't made any adjustments to this image outside of just bringing in one of my own personal clouds that I sell as a cloud kit pack and links down below. You can find my cloud kits down below. I have about 700 of them. Um, really high quality. You guys will love them. Anyways, all I did was I just imported the photo on both sides here. Let's just take a look very quickly at what has changed. We can see here on the right hand side in update number three, we got a new section here called horizon position with a shift in rotation. Over here on the left, we did not have that shift. That's going to allow us to shift the horizon. I'll show you that in a second here. And the other thing that we have as well is we have now underneath reflection, underneath reflection amount, we have water blur. Really cool. Now we can blur the water with our reflection. Very handy. Those are the main changes that you see. Everything else is under the hood. Now, again, I just brought this in with no adjustments at all. And we could just see that, you know, they, Skylum did do some algorithm AI adjustments underneath the hood, we can see here that the water reflection is completely different than what it was in update number two. So they're continually updating the AI. Um, in this particular instance, just bringing it in without making any adjustments. I don't know if it's actually better than what we saw over here on update number two, but I will point out one thing that has improved. And that is actually, if you look here, the tone of the water is darker to match the overall sky. So now our reflections, when they're put in the water, they are a little bit darker than what they were before, which is, which is a good thing because this reflection here, it was just way too bright, didn't look very real. One of the things that I was talking about with the uh, update number two when uh, reflections first came out. Now, here's one thing that they did address. So this was something I was very critical about is when you were moving the vertical slider, the clouds were going in the same direction and a, re a true reflection when you're out there, when the clouds are moving up in your reflection, the clouds are moving down. Well, they did adjust that and they fixed that really well. So if we look here in the vertical position, when I bring this down and bring this up, we can see the clouds moving down and moving up just like they should. If we go here to uh, update number two, again, that was not happening. Everything was going in the same direction at the same time. And that was one of the problems that was not allowing people to get a really accurate reflection. We can see though, however, that it is still not giving me that mirrored perfect, perfect reflection in the water. I've talked to Skyloom. That is something that they are really trying to work on. One of the suggestions that I have given them that they are hoping to look at into the future in a future build 
is the suggestion was to have a separate slider for the reflection so we can manually adjust the reflection in the water and position that independent of the sky and that'll allow us a little bit of manual control in fine tuning and getting that perfect reflection mirrored reflection so hopefully they're able to get that in a future version for us because that will tremendously help us in making these look very realistic because right now this doesn't again look realistic let me go ahead and throw in another one of my clouds here give us another look at how well that that vertical slider is now working compared to before i'm going to load up the same cloud in both of them and if we go over here in this is uh, on the left if we're looking at update number two adjust that offset that vertical offset see how those clouds are moving at the same direction and then i bring that down and look at we got all these beautiful ribbon clouds up above nothing reflected in the water well over here on the right in update number three if we bring this down and look at this i can get this down here and that actually looks fairly accurate now by adjusting the clouds got a nice reflection here um, unfortunately if i wanted to have this back a little bit further with that blue sky up above again we're still not getting that accuracy in the reflection that i would like to see hopefully if we can have some manual control over that in the future that's going to help out a lot but this has done a great job now of at least the clouds are now moving in the right direction when we adjust that vertical position. Let me show you something else that they've also really improved. And let's go ahead and we'll load up another one of my clouds, a sunset cloud here. And look at this right off the bat. The water here. So in update number two, the reflection was reflecting the clouds, but it wasn't really taken into a whole lot of consideration the color of the overall sky, of, of the overall scene. If we look over here on the right, look at how much more accurate that is. And let me just show you something. When I do a little bit of uh, vertical offset in our original here. So again, so I'm bringing this up and bringing it down. We can see here the scene stays kind of lit the same way so there was no change in the relighting of the scene at all the water is just reflecting the sky over here on the right in update number three let's go ahead and adjust this vertical position and look at what happens here so now this is a darker part of the sky the whole image has gotten darker including the foreground including the water as i bring this up look at the color and intensity that's happening in the water down here so you know the whole scene has has relit a little bit better especially the reflection in the water and of course we have adjustments down here that we can still do some more adjustments for color and let's say we wanted to give this a little bit more warmth that is still being reflected now in the water and just like we had before we have the relight scene where we can continue enhancing that relighting so this has been a really good addition to update number three for trying to get realistic reflections now, here's where we're going to get into the problem that I'm starting to see now. And I'm on a Mac One Mini, and I have the M1 version of the software. I've test tested this on my Mac One Mini. I've also tested it on my Mac One MacBook Pro. And I don't know if this is a Mac thing or what. I don't have any other computers to test this on. But let's take a look and zoom in here at 100%. And look at this. I've seen this at reflection areas where the um, where you have an object that's being reflected. We get this little checkerboard pattern that's happening here that is not happening in update number two. And we can just scroll around here and see that this is going along this whole fringe area here between the reflection and the water. If I turn off my Turn off my preview we can see that that's not there to begin with it's being brought on with the sky replacement and it doesn't matter if it's my clouds or if it's skyloom's clouds i have seen this happen in a couple other photos and i'll show you that as well let's actually go ahead and go into another photo okay and let's select this photo here this was a photo that i had done in my update number two video and let's go ahead and throw in a sky we'll just throw in one of my skies again now this is another uh, sort of an issue here that um, it's fixable, but the AI, you know, is not really knowing where my horizon in, is in this photo for some reason. So I just dropped in that cloud and we can see here that we're not seeing the sky in that photo. If we go here to update number two and let's go ahead and grab that same image and click on edit. And I'm just gonna reset 
my orientation. Let's go ahead and grab that. Make sure we're grabbing that same sky. And we can see here right off the bat, update number two puts it in a much better position. Update number three didn't. So what we have to do now is this is where that hor horizon shift, that new slider that they introduced really comes into play. So I have to move that up to bring my horizon where it should be. So it should be up in the middle here for whatever reason. Um, Luminar AI was thinking that my horizon was down at the bottom. So this is where that horizon shift position slider really works to bring that, bring your clouds back up, adjust them relative to your horizon. And then from there, you can go ahead and adjust your vertical position. And this was another image that I was finding that issue in as well too. Let me go ahead and just bring this up here and zoom in and we can see that checkerboard pattern again in this area here. It's it's kind of like they have this soft masking going on, you know, soft edge masking going on in the background there so that the clouds don't bleed into your reflection, which was another thing I was critical about. They, it does seem to be improved in update number three, but this edge, soft edge here is giving us a checkerboard pattern that is not evident in update number two. And I can show you just on one other photo that I've done, it seems like any photo that I have with this type of uh, reflection in the water, we can I can see that a little bit in my photos. And we can see this without the sky replacement and with the sky replacement and then zooming in. Now in this photo, it isn't as bad, but I'm seeing it over here. And if we scroll around here, we can see that pattern going in over here as well. Now, one last thing I wanted to show you on the new update, and let's go ahead and bring back this photo and bring that back into the edit mode. And this is the water blur. So when you have your clouds all set and you go ahead and click on water blur, you can adjust the blur of your reflection. It really helps to make your photo look a lot more realistic when you're doing a sky replacement. Now, of course, in this photo here, my vertical position's off quite a bit, so I'd have to slide that back down. And there we go. So that's a look at update number three from Skyloom. And again, in particular, there were some other updates that they had in this, some other features and enhancements in the program, but I just wanted to talk specifically of what they did with the sky replacement update in this, making it a little bit better. It's kind of like two steps ahead, one step back. You know, the two steps ahead are now that in the vertical, when we're doing that vertical adjustment, the clouds are going in the correct direction. The relighting is vastly improved. Uh, we do have the you know, water, the blur, we can blur the clouds in the reflection. Uh, but that error that I'm seeing here, those issues, that checkerboarding that I'm seeing is uh, that's that's where the step back comes from. So I'm sure Skyloom's going to address that real soon, and I would expect that to be fixed in their next update. And for Skyloom to continue to improve this, what they could really do that would really help us out a lot is to give us independent control of the placement of that reflection. So another slider that, you know, the reflection slider that allows us to move that slide, the reflection around so that we can place those clouds perfectly so we can get a perfect mirrored reflection. And the other thing I'd like to see too is further adjustments so that we can manually adjust the color and tone of that water reflection a little bit more than what we currently can do. So that's it. That is Luminar update number three in specific in regards to sky replacement. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel down below and any questions or comments, definitely feel free to leave them down below. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.